Welcome to Meet the Candidates 2024, a voter education program brought to you by the Shakopee Chamber of Commerce. My name is Tim Zunker, and I'm the president with the Shakopee Chamber and Visitors Bureau. Our hope is that these candidate interviews and profiles will help you, the voter, understand your choices when it comes to the 2024 election. We ask voters to arm themselves with the information necessary to make educated choices and to make casting your vote a priority. Please visit the Shakopee Chamber website at shakopee.org to find out information about the upcoming election for Shakopee School Board. At this time, I'd like to invite Tim Brophy, who's running or running again for Shakopee School Board. Tim, thank you for joining us today, and please tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, Tim. First, thanks to you and the Chamber for the opportunity to uh, do a Meet the Candidate uh, interview. Um, I've lived in the district now for almost 25 years. Time sure flies, right? Uh, the proud father of uh, Shakopee alumni, uh, now attending college at Mankato. I've got a younger daughter uh, who's at the high school, entering her junior year. I've got to play roles of coach dad uh, with the Shakopee Girls Softball Association, uh, most recently uh, entering the, the fourth season with the Shakopee Mountain Bike team. Um, but it's just, uh, it's just been a great ride. So appreciate the time. Great. Thank you, Tim. Uh, what motivated you to run or run again for Shakopee School Board? And what specific goals do you have to achieve during your term? Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, you know, and I would say that the school board career actually started uh, as a, uh, a community member. I was on the Community Facilities Task Force back in the 2018 2019 timeframe. We looked at facilities, um, uh, enrollment projections that ultimately led to a recommendation to move the early learning to the, uh, the Pearson uh, Early Learning Building. Uh, from that uh, opportunity came um, uh, uh, an option to uh, be appointed to the board when Mr. Reggie Bowerman retired. So I was actually able to fulfill his last year of that term. And then I was elected in 2020 uh, for my first term. Uh, just a, a, a lot has happened in the last four years. Uh, you know, gone through a, a global pandemic, uh, but we also saw, um, you know, and kudos to the community, uh, with the operating levy, um, you know, just to fund our teachers um, and to really support uh, education. So now we're in a great place to, I would like to say, play offense again. Uh, and it's just uh, looking forward to an opportunity for the next four years to further that. Great. Thank you, Tim. Shakopee Public Schools have, in, have maintained a graduate graduation rate that exceeds the state average. What strategies would you implement to continue the success and how would you address any potential challenges? Well, and first I'm, you know, it's, it's great that we're above the average, but I would say that is not the goal. You know, the goal is 100%, right? That sounds pretty lofty, uh, but it starts with building relationships with uh, the students. And it comes right out of the compelling, uh, you know, vision. If you go out to the Shopee web, uh, School's website, you'll see that the district calls it their moral imperative. That's pretty convicting language, moral imperative to change until all systems uh, work for each and every student. Uh, and measurably work for each and every student. Um, and that starts with building relationships. I'll, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, call out the great partnership with Scott County, who fully funded a position to do uh, a study in terms of attendance. I think we can you know, say pretty uh, um, you know, factually that attendance and graduation rates are pretty uniquely tied. Um, and, and just to make sure that kids are in the classroom be able to get that work done and meet them where they're at. Great. Thank you. According to the Minnesota North Star Accountability System, statewide, students are struggling to meet grade level standards in math, reading, and science. Using the data provided, what can Shakopee Public Schools do to stand above other schools in the state of Minnesota? Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad the word data shows up in there uh, because it is something that can be measured. Uh, even though it sounds somewhat subjective. And uh, as a board member, we've had the great opportunity uh, to see some of the work that's going on behind the scenes, uh, particularly um, with the last leadership development session, uh, uh, the assistant superintendent, Jim McClausich, and his learning teaching equity team uh, presented to us uh, what they're using in terms of tools to measure student success. Uh, that's anything from what we call the multi-tiered systems of support, or MTSS, fast bridge, um, and then really, uh, well, what I'd say, you know, data-driven uh, um, solutions that can be applied in the classroom to, to meet these students 
uh, and help them on that journey. And really those, those three areas, science, math, uh, and reading or literacy, the um, science standards were recently changed um, and that's been fully implemented. Math is hot off the press. Uh, we just approved the new curriculum and new standards in there. And I'm going to say uh, math and fun in the same sentence. I got to participate in some of that with our uh, um, the district advisory uh, committee. Um, just looking at how that's going to positively affect some of those outcomes. Um, and last, you heard you know probably hear a lot about the Read Act and literacy. Um, that's still being assessed. There's actually a pilot looking at new curriculums uh, and some of those tools as well. Um, and again, it's you know it's, it's I think it's important to have benchmarks and measures. You know I don't know that the, it's about Shakopee uh, you know exceeding other districts. I think it's we want to pr provide the best learning opportunity in all of those areas for each and every student. Great, thank you. With new legislative requirements affecting school budgets, how would you ensure fiscal responsibility while maintaining the quality of education in Shakopee Public Schools? Uh, school funding, right? That's a great conversation to have. No complexity there. Um, you know, and, and a lot of it, particularly with the board and some of my colleagues, uh, working with our legislators, uh, advocating for local control and how to use those resources. You know, there's really good work happening. I certainly don't want to understate that. But the problem is when you have new education mandates that are uh, underfunded or aren't funded at all, it creates challenges. Um, and we're looking at a funding model that is largely based on enrollment. Uh, enrollment on a national uh, trend is, you know, in a, a kind of a downward trajectory. So it really puts a lot of financial strain on school districts to put the, those uh, programs together. Um, so it's advocating, you know, with legislators to make sure that we're adequately funding schools to provide that curriculum. Um, and uh, we also work pretty closely with the Minnesota School Boards Association and the Delegate Assembly in particular when we're putting forth resolutions for recommendation uh, to help steer some of that uh, with both with Minnesota Department of Education um, and just state statute. So um, that's where, as a board member, we can certainly advocate uh, but it really boils down to how do we deliver that best learning experience for our students. Great. Thank you, Tim. And looking ahead, what do you see as the key areas of focus for the future of Shakopee Public Schools, and how would you contribute to their development? You know, there's, uh, I think, so much to be excited about. Obviously, we talked about, you know, the the call it the basics, the literacy, math, and science. But I think we're also in a really unique space in this kind of ever-changing, ever-evolving landscape with education, uh, the great work that's done in partnership, certainly with the chamber, with Scott County, with our local community businesses, and I'm, you know, referring largely to our academy model, what we call it the academy of Shakopee, not just Shakopee schools, but it's it's Shakopee as a community, creating those real world experiences that students have and you know be ready for the workforce to to continue to, to continue to advocate for for that, uh, to continue to build those partnerships. Um, and then I would be remiss if I didn't bring up just uh, how technology is evolving, uh, the generative AI space, and how are we going to evolve curriculum, uh, you know, to again uh, just meet students where they're at, and and maybe even listen to our students. What do they need um, from us, and we'll advocate accordingly. Great, thank you. Now, I'll give you an opportunity to give your closing message to the vote or to the viewers. Sure. Again, thanks, and uh, it's just been an honor to serve, uh, you know, the last, uh, uh, I, I guess, five years, if you include my, uh, my extra uh, term. Uh, I, would, I would say I'm looking forward to continuing to advocate for education, each and every student. I'm also, uh, you know, it's a good steward of taxpayer monies that are going to further this education. Um, I would I would encourage uh, any of the viewers. Uh, we're a board that's approachable. We want to be transparent. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions, comments. Tell us what's working. Tell us what you uh, think needs improvement. We want to be your voice as well. Uh, and I did this at the last candidate uh, meet the candidate forum. I'm going to steal Dr. Redmond's line. It's just a great day to be a saber. Great. Thank you so much. The views expressed in these interviews are those of the candidates, not those of the Chamber and Visitors Bureau. The Chamber is sponsoring these interviews as a service to the community and has gone to great lengths to ensure the objectivity. 
The chamber does not endorse any candidate, but seeks to provide you, the citizens and voters of Shakopee, with the information you need to make an informed choice. The Shakopee Chamber and Visitors Bureau extends a sincere thank you to the candidates. Once again, thank you, Tim. We appreciate your time and your service to our community by running for office. You're performing an important service to us all. Again, thank you for joining us for this edition of Meet the Candidates 2024. Thank you. Tim. Thank you. Welcome to Meet the Candidates 2024, a voter education program brought to you by the Shakopee Chamber of Commerce. My name is Tim Zunker, and I'm the president with the Shakopee Chamber and Visitors Bureau. Our hope is that these candidate interviews and profiles will help you, the voter, understand your choices when it comes to the 2024 election. We ask voters to arm themselves with the information necessary to make educated choices and to make casting your vote a priority. Please visit the Shakopee Chamber website at shakopee.org to find out more information about the upcoming election for Shakopee School Board. At this time, I'd like to introduce Jeff Smith, who's running for re-election for Shakopee School Board. Jeff, thanks for joining us today. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, well, thank you, Tim, and thank you to the board, through the chamber, for putting this on. I really appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I'm Jeff Smith. I'm running for re-election for the Shakopee School Board. Uh, I'm in my first term, in my fourth year of, of my first term on the school board. Uh, my wife, Jenny, and I have lived in Shakopee for 23 years. Um, we have two adult sons who both graduated from Shakopee High School, and they both attended Shakopee Public Schools, uh, kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, for my day job, I work at uh, Pearson in Bloomington. Uh, currently, I'm a technology manager there uh, for about 20 years, uh, worked at Pearson. Um, I'm also an uh, Army veteran and a retired Army Reserve soldier with uh, 27 years total service. Uh, in my uh, spare time, I'm an uh, associate uh, coach for the uh, Shakopee Mountain Bike Team. Um, when I ran in uh, 2020, uh, the school, uh, school was facing uh, many challenges. Uh, we were in the middle of a pandemic, and uh, teachers and students were trying to juggle how to, uh, how to get through distance learning and, and hybrid learning. And the district also was in the middle of many financial challenges. Uh, the, the most obvious uh, thing was the, the unassigned fund balance, which had fallen below 2% um, when uh, the recommended range is between 8 and 12% of the, the total budget. Um, we had an operating levy on the ballot in 2020, which unfortunately did not pass. Um, and uh, so one of my first uh, jobs, one of the first things I had to do when I started on the board in 2021 was uh, uh, approve laying off uh, 50 teachers and staff, uh, as well as cutting programs and uh, increasing class sizes. Uh, it was it was not a not a good good way to, to start my experience on the school board. Uh, but I'm proud to say we're in a much better place today. Um, the, uh, the Shakopee community overwhelmingly approved an operating levy in 2021, uh, which allowed us to, uh, to hire back many teachers, lower class sizes, and to give our uh, teachers um, historic pay raises, which um, while still not quite at the metro average, because even with the levy, we're still below the metro average in, in number of dollars available per student, um, at least got our teachers near uh, their, their peers in, uh, in surrounding communities. Um, so as I uh, uh, look toward a second term, I really wanna build on those successes um, and continue to support our teachers and give them the compensation and support they deserve. And, um, uh, focus on our students' achievement, uh, um, closing the education gap, um, giving, uh, looking at uh, data-driven uh, ways to improve their their uh, success in uh, reading and math, and then encourage students to take more challenging classes as well as participate in sports and the many new activities they have available. Great, thank you, Jeff. 
And what motivated you to run for re-election for Shakopee School Board? And if re-elected, what specific goals do you have to achieve or hope to achieve during your term? Uh, well, thank you. I think I jumped ahead a little bit and was actually possibly answering that question uh, uh, with my introduction. So, um, yeah, I, again, I, I think going forward, um, we really just need to focus on on student achievement. You know, we, we have some challenges, many of which were the result of the pandemic. We're still seeing still seeing negative fallout uh, from the pandemic that's affected um uh, affected students' um, success in math and reading. And uh, so we really need to stay focused on, on the students going forward and their success. Fortunately, uh, with the addition of, of our uh, superintendent, Mike Redmond, um, who was uh, hired uh, before I came on board, uh, we've seen great success in, in those efforts, mainly through the, the implementation of new systems in place to track success and, and actually see see data over time, which we really had no way to do before. Uh, we're really, really uh, focused on uh, student success going forward, which is, is definitely our motivation uh, at this time. Great. Thank you. Shakopee Public Schools have maintained a gradu graduation rate that exceeds the state average. What strategies would you implement to continue this success, and how would you address any potential challenges? Yeah, uh, um, like I said, we we have a uh, a very high graduation rate uh, compared to our neighboring districts, and I think a lot of that is is due to new systems we have in place to uh, to track our students' progress, um, particularly at the high school. Uh, we're we're tracking. We we have an on track system that that shows uh, you know credits towards graduation and how our students students are doing um, and whether they're on track or not. And we can see as early as ninth grade whether whether students are falling behind. Uh, at that time, our counselors are trained to to. Uh, work with the students to get them back on track, see what credits they need, whether it's in the core core credits or additional credits, uh, adjust their schedules accordingly, um, and and uh, look at potentially summer opportunities if if they need it, and then finally if if they that's still not enough, we have the excellent Takata Learning Center in Shakopee, which can provide alternative programs tailored for each student to uh, to get them to graduate on time. Great, thank you. According to the Minnesota North Star Accountability System, statewide, students are struggling to meet grade level standards in math, reading, and science. Using the data provided, what can Shakopee Public Schools do to stand above the other schools in the state of Minnesota? Yeah, I think it, our our focus going forward is on is on student achievement and success. And you know, and like you said, the I think really due to the to the pandemic, we're just still seeing still seeing students kind of falling behind where we'd like them to be, um, even even uh, you know this many years later. And Shakopee's not alone in the state with these challenges. Another thing we're seeing uh, as a fallout of the pandemic is lower attendance in in the district, and you know that's true uh, true statewide. Um, we are implementing new reading and math curriculum that the teachers are being trained on last year and this year. Um, and as well as, like I said, we have, we have systems in place now to carefully track student progress, you know, not just in the periodic uh, uh, tests that the students take, but just throughout the year and seeing where students are uh, and, and where they need to be. Um, uh, yeah, it's with and and then the subject of attendance, uh, we're we have a new full time person working at the high school now. That's uh, just for attendance. That's fully funded by Scott County, and we have a, a close relationship with Scott County. And and it's it's been, uh, you know, with we've had some joint meetings with them, and it's just been a great relationship with them. And so this person is going to be working with families directly who struggle with attendance to see where their challenges are and what we can do about that. Great. Thank you, Jeff. With new legislative requirements affecting school budgets, how would you ensure fiscal responsibility while maintaining the quality of education in Shakopee schools? Yeah, that's a great question. And I, I'm, I'm really proud of our Shakopee finance director, Bill Minazzi, um, who's uh, he's been instrumental in getting our budget back on track since uh, we had the, the our uh, unassigned fund balance at historic lows, and then the failed operating levy. Uh, now, four years later, um, 
our unassigned fund balance is is at the policy level for the first time in nine years. Uh, in addition to that, uh, through uh, Bill's efforts, uh, our uh, our bond rating has gone up twice in the last three years. So we're in a much better spot financially uh, than than we were. And then uh, with regard to uh, new state legislation, uh, you know, for things like uh, like paid family leave and uh, unemployment conversation for a uh, compensation for some of our, our part time workers, which I think are great programs. Uh, and these are funded by the state. Uh, but, you know, we we're tracking carefully how that affects our, our overall budget and where we see concerns, uh, you know, is, especially as we look at new legislation with the new sessions coming up. You know, if we if we see concerns, we have great relationships with our both of our state representatives and and our uh, state senator to uh, to bring those concerns to them directly. Great. Thank you. And looking ahead, what do you see as the key areas of focus for the future of Shakopee Public Schools, and how would you contribute to their development? You know, I, I, we really need to focus on student achievement going forward and, and setting students up for lifetime success. Uh, you know, our, our excellent superintendent, Mike Redmond, you know, he's, he's got a motto, you know, every kid is my kid. And you just see that, uh, you see that he exudes that every day uh, in, with what he does in the district. And, you know, with the systems he's, he's put in place, we're, we're, we're tracking students much better than we were able to do four or five years ago. We know where students are. Uh, we know whether, where, whether they're on track to where they need to be and with enough time to do something about it, to actually, uh, uh, you know, intercede and, and uh, you know, provide, you know, with the other programs we have, you know, with the multi-tiered systems of support to give students, you know, intervention need if they need it, and whether it's math or reading or, or other things, you know, and then the developmental designs, which is 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 really kind of uh, uh, redesigned how we interact with students and, and, you know, reaching students where they are, because we have a very diverse community with multi-language learners and, you know, just being able to reach out to them and, and uh, communicate with them where they need to be. And I think that's that's just done a, a, a great job. Um, I'm just, I'm really excited for the future of our district. Great, thank you, Jeff. Uh, that's all the questions I have. So I'll give you an opportunity to give your closing statement and message to the voters. Yeah, thank you, Tim. Um, you know, one of my, my greatest things I'm able to do to my, that brings me the greatest joys uh, serving on the school board is handing out diplomas at the high school graduation. It's, it's really just being able to shake hands and, and congratulate them. And, uh, and just seeing the, uh, you know, just the wonderful men and women that Chalkbee is graduating. You just, you know, the future is in good hands and, and we're just, we're doing great things. And it's just really excited to see, um, I'm just I'm continually impressed by the amazing young men and women that that uh, attend our schools, um, I, and but you know obviously that's thanks to the you know the tireless efforts of our award winning teachers and we need to give them all the support they need the compensation they deserve and and the resources they need uh, to you know to continue to weather the you know the challenges that we've experienced over the last several years. Uh, they I. I get the the pleasure of of accompanying our superintendent while he he uh, gets to attend classes. So I've seen the teachers at work and the great things they do. It's it's really it's really just heartening just to just to see to see them in action. And I I I know we're heading in a great direction. Um, and finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that on the ballot this November is a renewal for the capital projects levy. Um, a better name for this levy is the the safety and technology levy. Uh, you know this this levy is uh, is essential for uh, for safety technology like like cameras and security systems in the district. You know most people when they they think when they hear technology they think of like iPads and laptops, but it's really much more than that. It's it it is essential for the the safety and security of our district. In addition to empowering teachers uh, to teach them uh, you know for what they do. Um, this is a renewal of an existing levy at the same rate, so your taxes will remain the same. And I, I just really want to put a, a big promotion in there uh, to vote yes uh, for kids this fall. Great. Thank you. Thank you. The views expressed in these interviews are those of the candidates, not those of the Chamber and Visitors Bureau. 
The chamber is sponsoring these interviews as a service to the community and has gone to great lengths to ensure the objectivity. The chamber does not endorse any candidate, but seeks to provide you, the citizens and voters of Shakopee, with the information you need to make an informed choice. The Shakopee Chamber and Visitors Bureau extends a sincere thank you to the candidates. Thanks again, Jeff. We appreciate your time and your service to our community by running for office. You are performing an important service to us all. Again, thank you for joining us for this edition of Meet the Candidates 2024. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Tim. Welcome to Meet the Candidates 2024, a voter education program brought to you by the Shakopee Chamber of Commerce. My name is Tim Zunker, and I'm the president with the Shakopee Chamber and Visitors Bureau. Our hope is that these candidate interviews and profiles will help you, the voter, understand your choices when it comes to the 2024 election. We ask voters to arm themselves with the information necessary to make educated choices and to make casting your vote a priority. Please visit, please visit the Shakopee Chamber website at shakopee.org to find out information about the upcoming special I'm going to start over. I'm reading old notes. That's all right. <laughs> I'm all for it. It's not a special election. Taking over, so it's yeah. fine. All right. Three, two, <clears throat> one. Welcome to Meet the Candidates 2024, a voter education program brought to you by the Shakopee Chamber of Commerce. My name is Tim Zunker, and I'm the president with the Shakopee Chamber and Visitors Bureau. Our hope is that these candidate interviews and profiles will help you, the voter, understand your choices when it comes to the 2024 election. We ask voters to arm themselves with the information necessary to make educated choices and to make casting your vote a priority. Please visit the Shakopee Chamber website at shakopee.org to find out more information about the upcoming election for Shakopee School Board. And at this time, I'd like to invite or thank Nick Zedek for joining us today. Uh, start off by telling us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. And thank you to the Chamber of Commerce. I think that this uh, platform you guys offer is great for our community and just to at least get to know each other, you know? So I appreciate that. I'm a lifelong resident of Shakopee. I was born and raised here, a saber through and through, went through the school systems here. And um, actually my wife is also a lifelong resident of Shakopee. So we've uh, we've got some trenches here, you know? So that that is great. Um, I have two daughters, both in the school system right now at Jackson, uh, one starting kindergarten, the other starting third grade. Both of them have been through the ECFE and Stepping Stones uh, classes or programs here in Shakopee, which I highly encourage people to get out and take advantage of. They're fantastic for both students and parents. Um, but uh, after my Sabre career, I moved on to great distances. We traveled all the way down to Mankato, Minnesota. Yeah. Um, went there, got a, a bachelor's degree in finance, uh, under studies in business law and business administration. And then I traveled back home to Shakopee and uh, somehow ended up in the insurance business. I, um, I've had a couple different uh, levels or, or mostly on the agent sales and service side. I did a little bit of management for a couple of years. And in 2009, decided to start an independent agency, which we uh, own and operate today. I'm a great team that works with me that's currently there holding down the fort so I can do things like this. So I'm, I'm thankful and grateful for that. Um my wife, I mentioned before, she's going to be a great asset in this. She's very passionate about the schools and really helps and does a lot of volunteering um, in some of her free time, and that that will uh, assist me in this role. Uh, also, you know, I got involved. My my primary involvement in the school systems has kind of been fairly recent. Uh, when I learned about the levy and what impact it would have to our school systems and our community, our property values, everything, you know, everything that I love about Shakopee, I, I, I kind of got involved a little bit in the Vote Yes Committee uh, back in 2021. And then that has led me to other opportunities. And so I've been a part of the District Advisory Council now for a little over a year, where I get a little bit of inner ball uh, information as to things that the school district's doing and things that are to come. So that has been a nice insight. And that's kind of that's kind of how we landed here. Great. Well, thank you, Nick. Yeah. We'll get into the questions. 
Uh, what motivated you to run for Shakopee School Board? You kind of touched on that, but we'll have yeah, to dig a exactly. little deeper. It, it seemed like the logical next step. You know, I had some encouragement from family and friends to that that there was an opportunity for this. So that's kind of how we got here. Um, you know, one other passion and thing that that has driven me to get here is um, just assisting in the progress of science-based learning and science-based curriculum. Um, we've kind of been um, researching and following the, the READ Act and things that are being implemented in our schools and other schools and along the state. And so I, I, having some influence and having uh, the ability to help track, manage, and and assist the district in any way and ultimately to take care of our students has been a big part of it. And, and, and one other thing was, you know, we made a lot of promises to the, to the community with the levy and everything else. And I just want to have as much influence to make sure that we're living up to those things with class sizes and everything else. Great. And then uh, the other part of that would be any other goals that you hope to achieve during your term? Yeah, I mean, th I guess in a backwards way, those are kind of some goals that I want to make sure that we're doing is is that we are following up on our promises and that we are implementing those strategies the best that we can. But uh, I also admit that this role is new to me, so I don't know exactly what impact I can have, and I look forward to finding out. I think this is going to be one of my best steps and strategies to doing so. Great. Thank you. Shakopee Public Schools have maintained a gradu graduation rate that exceeds the state average. What strategies would you implement to continue this success, and how would you address any potential challenges? Yeah, I mean, graduation, right? It's it's great. It's a metric that we use. You know, everybody uses because it's very finite. Um, but I do think that, you know, graduation should almost be a culmination of success, not necessarily a goal. I hope that, you know, by having – the whole school experience, starting from early on, a great experience for your students. If they're learning and implementing um, great strategies to read and write at an early level, the rest of school is going to be a lot easier. The middle school, the high school, it's not going to start in 12th grade. It starts early on. And I think that'll improve graduation rates. If you make it a fun experience or a better experience and you're not nervous or worried about being called on or your flaws throughout the school year, you probably lead to, to greater success and that ultimately equal to great thing. better graduation rates. Yeah. Great. Thank you. According to the Minnesota North Star Accountability System, statewide, students are struggling to meet grade level standards in math, reading, and science. Using the data provided, what can Shakopee Public Schools do to stand above other schools in the state of Minnesota? Yeah, it's kind of a theme, right? And I, you know, part of being on the, the DAC council this last year, albeit a small sample size, I got to uh, preview a, a new math curriculum that we're about to roll out and implement. And it's hard to be wowed by a math curriculum, but I was. I was like, this is kind of fresh thinking. I like it. And I think that it'll help kids, um, you know, excel in all these standardized tests and everything else in school. And going back to it, I hate to beat continue down this drum, but I'm going to, and, you know, learning to read, I think at an early age and implementing some of these science-based methods will help every you know, social studies, math. I mean, if, if you're reading to comprehend, you're not, you're not focusing on reading and you're just comprehending what you're reading. I think it's going to improve all your testing and, and your whole school experience. Great. Thank you. With new legislative requirements affecting school budgets, how would you ensure fiscal responsibility while maintaining the quality of education in Shakopee Public Schools? That's another important feature, right? And, and a budget's a budget. You have to work within it. So we'll look for creative ways to, to use that money to impact the most important things. And to me, that's your staff, you know, and your teachers and the curriculums that they're using. So um, that's part of the excitement of this of this opportunity is to get in there and get a little deeper into what what our budget entails and what we can do with it um, I know the current group seems to really be doing a, a great job at that and and I would only hope to add to the team that's that's currently in, uh, implementing a lot of this but the budget's also the budget right and you can only do so much with so much money so I feel like all of us as a community need to reach out to our politicians and legislators to let them know that education is important to them. Education is important to our community and we need more money to, to do the things that we need to do, especially, you know, rolling entire new curriculums and training for teachers requires a lot of money. So uh, Minnesota's 
one of the highest tax states in the country. And and so you would think that we would have, be one of the leaders in educational funding, and we're not. We're kind of middle of the pack. So I think that's something that everybody needs to, to focus on. Great. Thank you. And looking ahead, what do you see as the key areas of focus for the future of Shakopee Public Schools, and how would you contribute to their development? Well, and Shakopee is a growing community. It's great. It's fantastic. When I started, it was like 9,000 people, you know, we're, we're well past that. We're probably what, 45,000 or so. So, uh, you know, the beauty of that is we're growing all our traditional activities and sports and things like that. And by having a bigger talent pool and all that, but what's really cool. And I've learned in the last few years from going to meetings and stuff is all the non-traditional activities that are out there. There's so many things that we're constantly, almost every year, it seems like we're adding a new activity that kids can do from fishing to volleyball to some of the science-based classes. Those are those are things that I think uh, will continue to grow. As, as our community grows, those things will continue to develop, and I think that'll just make for better students, and they'll leave here as, as great adults. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, give you an opportunity to do a closing statement and message to the voters. Yeah. You know, like my whole strategy or, or my whole – um, passion for this is to stick to the basics. You know, I want to come in and make sure that we're spending our money right and that we're um, focusing on reading and writing and things that will ultimately have the greatest impact of our students. But I love this community and, and I'm going to work hard. That's all I've known being raised by a single mother. That's just what I know. Work hard to, to, to provide for your family. I'll work hard for my community the same way that I have in my personal life. And I'll also try to be as accessible as possible. So I'd like to be the voice of parents, teachers, students, of course, and the district and, and, and try to work with everybody to make this as great a place to live as possible. Great. Thank you, Nick. The views expressed in these interviews are those of the candidates, not those of the Chamber and Visitors Bureau. The Chamber is sponsoring these interviews as a service to the community and has gone to great lengths to ensure the objectivity. The Chamber does not endorse any candidate, but seeks to provide you, the citizens and voters of Shakopee, with the information you need to make an informed choice. The Shakopee Chamber and Visitors Bureau extends a sincere thank you to the candidates. Again, thank you, Nick. We appreciate your time and your service to our community by running for office. You're performing an important service to us all. Again, thank you for joining us for this edition of Meet the Candidates 2024. Thank you. Thank you.